All right, then. Well, we got some great stuff on here, so let's just see what happens. We got missed! There we go! At last we get... <laughs> At last, we get something that was actually requested to be put on. So there you go, Proxima. You were right. First two games. It happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. I like the old-timey, uh... <laughs> oh, the really old 3D graphics. <laughs> it's like an unfinished episode of OG VeggieTales. Cyan. Oh, I can already tell we're in for greatness, based on those old computer sounds. <laughs> Here we are! It's missed. Uh, yes, I would love to start a new game. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is gonna be good. This is gonna be good. I realized the moment I fell into the fissure that the book would not be destroyed as I had planned. It continued falling into that starry expanse of which I had only a fleeting glimpse. I've tried to speculate where it might have landed. I must admit, however, such conjecture is futile. Still, questions about whose hands might one day hold my missed book are unsettling to me. I know my apprehensions might never be allayed. And so I close, realizing that perhaps the ending has not yet yet been written. written. Oh, this this is already off to a great start. I can't wait. Hey, the book itself is called Mist. How wonderful. I like the music thus far. I also like the uh, narrator. Graphics are impressive, considering the, t the year this was made in. <laughs> How beautiful. Okay. So, like, we can move in different directions? Okay, so we can, like, look around our surroundings, eh? This is interesting. So that's where we came from. Uh oh Secret passageway. Oh, so it's just, like, click on stuff and see what happens. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, I'm trying to click on the other stuff. Uh, okay, I guess we're going towards the creepy pool of water. Are we playing checkers now? That's a lot of buttons. We probably have to push them in a specific order, huh? <laughs> if we go to this screen, we get really dramatic music. Oh ho! Settings, dimensional imager, topographical extrusion test, 40, water turbulent pool is 67, marker switch diagram, 47. So that's the marker switch diagram. You know what? Maybe I should take a photo of this. <laughs> just, just in case. <laughs> My sister just sent me an image where it's like, holy Bible, signed copy. And then like someone like, I have my doubts about that. It's, yeah, if you're doing it, like, actually trying to win, it's best to have a pen and paper, I imagine, yeah. Let's do the extrusion test for 40. Um, <clears throat> hey, there you go! 
That is indeed the topographical excursion test. Oh, that's cool. I somehow don't think Moses signed his copy of uh, Genesis. That's neat. That's a neat little treat. Okay, let's go back to 47 because we didn't actually experience that real fame. I thought it just triggered back to that. But no, if we go back here and now we, now we push the button, it'll do something different. Okay. I don't really understand what's going on. I'm just here for the ride. 67. You idiot! Now you're gonna flood the place! You died. <laughs> Try again. <laughs> oh, and that's literally just... That's what we, it was at when we first arrived. Okay. I guess we gathered some cool... Oh, wait, hang on. Go back, go back, go back. I spied something on the stairs. Maybe I didn't. If we go back out here and go this way now. That little switch that tantalizes me. Pfft. This is so weird. <laughs> Catherine, I've left you a message of utmost importance in our fore chamber beside the dock. Enter the number of marker switches on this island into the imager to retrieve the message. Yours, Atrus. Atlas? I think it's At Atrus. I don't know. I'm bad at writing people. Uh, reading people's person. Atrus. Okay, I I read the letters correctly. I just I'm like that's a name. I guess so. Wait, so, uh, enter the number of marker switches on this island. Okay, so we pu we pulled one of the switches earlier. That was, uh, that one over here. I don't think I've seen any others. Okay, that's the second one. So there are two thus far. Oh, yeah, this is an inviting little room. This is exactly what I pictured the dentist office on the island to look like. This is not an ominous looking chair. Yes, let's sit in the chair. Oh my gosh, this is involved. We probably don't have enough. We don't have enough information to activate anything there yet. Turn out the lights. Oh yeah, creepy, creepy chair. Oh, maybe it's like. Yeah, maybe, so maybe if we change the date. Oh, it'll show us different constellations. Okay, so if we need to know the constellations on a given date, that's what we do. Okay, so we've seen two of the marker switches on the island. Got to figure out if there's any more. Let's look at this temple now. Ooh, the Parthenon. Very nice. Oh my, there's so much here. Okay. Oh, we're on Australia. Australia's a lot smaller than I thought. Tower rotate. I I didn't mean to do that. I guess we're rotating the tower because I just wanted to examine this. Yeah, so let's look at that right there. That literally is going to rotate the entire tower. That seems excessive. Oh! Are we gonna... Do you want to skidoo? <laughs> I would love to skidoo. Either that or Mario just jumped in there and he skidooed. Could be that. Uh, can I... Okay, yes. I want to look at the book. Oh, no. We're... I can see why this game is very difficult to beat. There's so much here. And, oh, wow. It's easy to get lost. Layers and layers. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Pfft, 
You shouldn't have done that, idiot. Oh, a guy's. F oh, hi. Something about his butt itching. Why are these books powered by electricity? Man, they knew what Kindle was going to be before it was a fan. Okay. That happened. Oh, 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 there's, wait, there's cracks up there. I wonder if that'll align with a specific constellation. So this is a secret passageway that we opened up randomly. It would be foolish not to investigate. Oh, hey, is this the entrance to Carmen San Diego's uh, hidden fortress? Yeah, so let's go in here. To the library! I can see right now exactly why this game became famous. Because given the year it was, it was released in, this must have been mind-blowing to audiences at the time. And, it, and you really couldn't make a game like this again that would be received the same way. Wow. Oh, okay. I can also imagine that it would be very easy to accidentally miss something that's crucial to uh, solving the puzzle. Top of the island. Hey, open up! They said this was to the library. This I remember there being more books in my local library as a child. Okay. This is unusual. There's a key. Wait. There's a key back there. This says this leads to the key. Ooh, here we go. We got three different dates. Gonna snap a photo of that. I know exactly where we're gonna enter those. Oh, you're making it. You're making it too easy. I know it's the very beginning of the game. But still. Off to the tower. I also have to imagine that rotating the tower is probably going to play a role in these, this. <laughs> I'm back, baby. Ooh, is there a secret in the fire? Oh, hang on. There's so much to do. Okay, so first of all... Could do we cannot do that. Oh, that closes the pathway. I mean, this means we can look at the books. Oh no, do each of these books have different things? Oh no, you're kidding me. That one doesn't look like there's any clues there. Okay, how about the blue books here? Who burned all the books? Doggone it, Nero. How could you? Aha! I have called this age Chateaubriand, and it is a very different world. Although it is exactly as I imagined it, it is still amazing to see it with my own eyes. Water covers this age as far as I can see, except for a small rocky island. Uh, El south, south here, there is only tree, or elsewhere, there are only trees, which grow directly out of the water. A myriad of thin wooden passageways are built just above the water and disappear into the forest. I assume they were built by some, ti some time ago, for they appear aged. I am eager to discover more about this land and its people, but I have arrived here late and I must rest. 
I was awakened this morning by strange noises coming from a pathway adjacent to one on, so the one on which I slept. I saw a group of monkey-like people heading in my direction. They had not seen me yet, and I did not feel threatened by their presence. Their responses to me were one I would have never expected. After staring at me for a short time, they fall to their knees and began a, what appeared to be some sort of ceremonial worship. I tried to speak to them, but they did not understand my language. Instead, they indicated through enthusiasm hand motions that I was to follow them. As we walked, I began to notice that the waters below us were changing colors. Slowly, softly, they would change, fr subtly, they would change from deep, uh, deep blue to muddy orange, then from muddy orange to beautifully clear. I was so intrigued by the water, I had hardly noticed that we had arrived at a ladder. Climbing the ladder led us to the village, which is about 10 meters above the water, and can only be reached by rope ladders that stretch from the lower paths of, to the village level, approximately halfway up the grand trees. It is very interesting watching these people carry out their daily tasks. Even after watching them for hours, I did not understand exactly what they were doing. Wow, this goes on for a while. At sunset, they motioned for me to follow them. I followed the creatures to the doorway of an enormous hut. Strangely, once inside, I found that the hut appeared even larger than it had from the outside. The walls were garnished with bright metals, and the center of the hut lay, uh, sat the leader of these people. At least he appeared to be their leader, for he sat a meter off the floor in a thick throne. Guards surrounded the strong creature, who was dressed in many exotic, colorful fabrics. Next to the leader sat a very old human, at least, uh, to some extent he appears human. His hair, which was only on his face and head, was completely gray, almost white, and hung very long around his frail body. His thin head hung limply by an almost grotesque neck that could not hold its head up to look at me. But what a surprise, this creature could speak my language. Shortly thereafter, I was given a bed with some hand motions that looked like to be telling me to sleep. I look forward to learning more. This... Man, there's a lot of pages to this. As I suspected, the ancient creature is a human, but he is old beyond his own reckoning and seems almost insane. However, the tree dwellers almost revere him as a god. They are treating me now in the same fashion, which makes me feel very uncomfortable. It is almost impossible for to understand this old man. His voice is feeble but wild. He has adopted much of the language of the tree dwellers. He himself told me he had not spoken our own tongue in ages. He attempted to explain to me the history of this place. The following is my best translation of what he has told me. Many years ago, the humans and tree dwellers lived together in this place, which was then a vast island. They interacted very little. The humans dwelt on the ground while the tree dwellers lived high above the humans. Occasionally, the island was disturbed by the mysterious rumblings, which happened randomly. Some sort of tectonic or volcanic action, I suspect. The sometimes sl uh, slight, sometimes heavy tremors would only last a short time, then they would stop allowing everything to return to normal. One day, things changed. The rumbling began and grew quickly to unprecedented levels. Soon it became apparent that the entire island was sinking slowly into the ocean around them. Many of the humans died that day, but not before sacrificing themselves in order to st uh, stop the sinking of the island. The humans who lived through this catast catastrophe moved into the trees where they gradually died out, maybe because they were unequipped for such an environment, but I am not sure. This is the story the old man communicated to me, although many details are very unclear in my mind. I am especially confused as to how the humans saved the island from completely sinking. In fact, I doubt the accuracy of that part, of, but I'm looking forward to learning more. As I suspected, the ancient creature is a human, but he is old beyond his own reckoning and seems almost insane. Wait, isn't this, isn't this the exact same thing again? One day, it became, soon it became apparent the entire island was slowly, sinking slowly into this, many of the humans... Did, oh, oh wait, hang on. I accidentally t turned backwards in the page. That's my bad. I doubt the accuracy of that story. The island must have stopped. <laughs> I'm so stupid! I thought every, no matter where you clicked, it would advance the text. So I'm like, wait, is this guy crazy? Is he just repeating the same things over and over again? Is that it? Is he just like, 
in a time loop or something. There, I'm, I'm dumb. For, forget it, I'm too stupid for mist. <laughs> the island must have stopped on its own, yet the old man believes in the truth of the story as if he had been there. And the tree dwellers worship him, and apparently all humans, as if they were heroes or gods. The old man ended our conversation today with an event that I will never forget. He began gripping my hands tightly, murmuring something about rest and asleep. He then said, we had expected you to, com you to come sooner. These actions filled me with some sort of immediate dread. With such effort, he's, with much effort, he stood to his feet. I tried to help, but he pushed me away with more force than I imagined his frail body contained. The tree dwellers quietly surrounded him with very solemn faces. Then they kneeled down before him. He walked to each and placed his hand on their heads. All the while, he murmured words which I did not understand. Finally, he turned to me and smiled. Then he closed his eyes and walked out the door and off of the narrow path of night into the trees. The tree, dwe tree dwellers were silent, then began a procession down the nearest rope ladder. As I was descending, I saw several of them pick the body that had fallen onto a lower level of the walkway and carry it away. He was laying there at the dead end of a short pier-like structure. With the use of the same potion, one of the tree uh, creatures lit, uh, lit the pier on fire, and I watched as the flames engulfed him. As this strange funeral proceeded, the waters around the pier changed to dull green. This morning I awoke, finding it hard to even believe the previous evening's events. The water is a dull green, for as far as I can see for now. For some reason, the water no longer shifts color. As I wander, wander throughout the pathways, the creatures watch me, curious to see what I will do next. They are constantly offering me strange objects of affection. I even found food outside the doorway in the, to the room that I, which I slept. This is a unique race of beings. I hope to learn their language soon so that I might learn more from them. I have lived on this world for three months off and on. The tree dwellers have shown great hospitality. I am even beginning to learn bits of their language. I have decided to return home for an extended stay with my loving wife and sons, and hopefully return with them. However, I am sure Catherine will once again refuse. I think this age would be a wonderful experience for them all, and I at least look forward to how Sirius and Akinar will react to its curious inhabitants. Catherine is staying behind, as expected. My sons have returned with me, and they enjoy this age very much. They get along very well with the Tree Dwellers, and are picking up their language surprisingly fast. I have no doubt that it will not be too long before they can speak with the Tree Dwellers much better than I myself. I am leaving tomorrow to check on Osmonian age. Sirius has suggested that I allow him and his brother to stay. Though the idea unsettles me, I know the boys are growing up rapidly. The hospitality of these creatures is such that I could not, I think of no better place to leave them for a short while, so I will consent to their request. I warn the boys not to take advantage of the respect the tree dwellers have for their ideas. They seem to understand my warning, and I have faith that they will follow it. Much to my dismay, upon arriving in the Everdomes, I learned that Pran and her peep that Pran? Pran and her people are continuing to be menaced by the cho the chocolate. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the shock dick. That's what I think it is. I fear for their survival and plan on returning to her shortly after checking on Sirius and Akinar here. See Everdome's journal for more information. After watching Sirius and Akinar, I see they are handling things very well, and I think I can put to rest any fears about leaving them in Chuckinabon again. How long does this go on? Okay. Not for too much longer, and for a little longer time here. The tree dwellers seem slightly depressed that I am uh, leaving, but they are happy that Sirius and Akinar are staying behind again. I have been gone for over three days, and I have been to many different places. I had to tell Sirius and Akinar about Prian's uh, death today, and they were visibly shaken, though they only remembered her from their childhood. Catherine has suggested that it would be wise for Sirius and Akinar to leave uh, Channelwood for a while, and I have to agree, they will be returning with me when I leave again. I have told my sons that they will be uh, returning with me in two days. They spent the entire night telling me of an adventure they experienced in my absence, and it was rather remarkable. It seemed they constructed a boat with the creatures and traveled some ways into the surrounding waters. I enjoy hearing them talk uh, excitedly of their adventures, and I am reminded of my own adventures as a child. I finally understand why the tree dwellers have been giving me many inks and insisting that I write with them. Looking through some of my past entries, I see that the inks have changed from the black I thought they were to various different colors. I have shown some of the uh, creatures my journal, and they laughed and they uh, shouted. I did not know they had such a sense of humor. Even now, as I look through this very colorful journal, I cannot help but uh, laugh myself. Uh, we will be returning tomorrow, so my sons are with the creatures for the last night here. They have told me they would like to come to... Uh, 
channel would again, and they also asked if they can visit some after ages alone. Though I have to think over the request, I believe they have proven to me that they are trustworthy and responsible. Catherine will also help me decide whether they are ready to travel alone. For now, I must give my farewells to the creatures, for I do not know how long it will be until I visit this age again. And we got some neat little drawings. You know, I'll take a photo of the drawing. I don't know why, but I'll take a photo of the drawings. Maybe it'll be helpful. Wow, that was a lot. I bet the... Do the other books have stuff as well? They sure do. No, I'm not... <laughs> That's enough reading for now. Is there a secret in the chimney? If there's no secret passageway in the chimney, I will be a little disappointed. Aha! <laughs> Aha! Wow! Actually, was there something in his journal? about the, uh, blocks? No, he just left the map. Okay. Well then. I'll just leave my initials. There we go. Okay, okay, alright. We did that! Oh look at this, it's a well. Is that a new switch or is that an old switch? Oh, let's push the spider button. Yes! Spider button, spider button. Push the button with spiders, man. Let's go to the church, I guess. Oh wait, maybe we can't. Okay, well, maybe we don't have enough clues to go through there. Dip -dip -dip -dip. Oh, what time is it? Hang on. Oh, hey, it is 9.30. It's almost 9.30 in real life, too, so that's cool. Oh, creepy old shed. Yes, please. That's another switch. That's, I believe, the third or fourth switch we've seen. Yeah. Do 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 do. Let's push every button. It's probably not the best idea, actually. Yeah, that's probably not. Aha! Uh -huh. There's a note. Uh -huh. So, the left one is the power, then we have the power to the spaceship. There's a spaceship here, and ten generator switches. Okay, but it doesn't give us a clue on which ones to actually push. Okay, so that's the generator. This is weird. So it sounds like the book takes you to different weird time periods. I mean, different normal time periods, of course. Okay, is that the same... Okay. So at this point, there have been four switches. But I want to go back to, uh... Oh. Five switches. Oh, come on. You, with the ominous music, you can't tell me there's nothing up here. It's a giant gear. Hello? I would like to ride the giant gear. Okay, apparently we can't ride the giant gear. Okay. Uh, let's enter five, because that's how many switches we've seen on the island. Is it actually going to do something? No, we probably got the number wrong. There's probably more switches that we haven't found yet. Wait, hang on. Was that another ladder that we could go down? Is that a ladder? Is that a ladder leaning down or up? It's leading up. Never mind. 
Yeah, this is where we want to go. Because we got some dates we can enter. Yeah, we do. Maybe this will give us another clue. Man, Blue's Clues is a lot harder than I remember. Okay, so we have October. October 11th. 1984. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Dang, that's a lot of options. Is this like a time machine right here? Uh, 10.04 a.m. Oh, we gotta turn the lights off. Is that, um... Is that all we get? Wait, is that all we get? Very disappointing. <laughs> this is quite disappointing. I'll take a photo of it, because I mean, I guess why not? Maybe one of the other dates will do a little better. Okay, what, what was what were the other dates? The next one was January seventeenth, twelve oh seven. Okay, January. No, no, no. January seventeenth, twelve oh seven. And then 5.46 a.m. Are these like specific times in history where really important things happened? Oh no, do we have to do constellation stuff? I'm so bad with the constellations in real life, where they're like, Look, look, Artie! And see those free stars? It's Orion's Bolt! I'm like, or it's Orion's Belt. I'm like, where? They're like, the free stars there! I'm like, there's like a million stars in the sky right now. <laughs> how do, what do you mean? They're like, how do you not see them? It's the free stars that are kind of in a belt shape. I'm like, those are literally just could be any free stars. <laughs> they're like, you're an idiot. I'm definitely not. I'm not crazy. I don't know how people did the star stuff. Okay, uh, how's it going, Eddie? Uh, we're playing Mist right now. Okay, let's go to November now. November 23rd. Uh, 9791. Okay, so this hasn't quite happened yet in real life. Ninety-seven, ninety-one, six forty-seven p.m. How did they program in all of this star stuff? Like, are you kidding me? Did they actually program in a separate set of star constellations for every single possible value? I mean, obviously they probably have mathematical formulas that they apply. That's clearly what's going on, but still, that's absolutely nuts. That right there, based on the bright stars, it literally looks like a person just shrugging, like, what do you mean you can't solve the puzzle? Are you stupid or something? Gee, thanks. Thanks a lot. Ugh. Oh man, this game's already making my brain hurt. Okay, let's see if there's other stuff on the- Oh my gosh, we gotta go to the blimp. Oh, sure, sure enough, there's another switch. No, enter the blimp. Come on, come on, man, I really want to enter the blimp. <laughs> Real life knowledge is not involved. That's a relief. Because I would definitely be too stupid for that.
I can't believe there's a spider button. And a snake button. Oh, can we go... Can little Timmy go in the well? No, but there's a boat inside. Parfenon, Parfenon. Okay, so we already went to the generator room. Otherwise, I think we've explored most of the rest of the island. Wait! Oh! Log cabin! There are seven switches on the island. Aho! Uh -huh. What do you know? Oh! There's a safe now here, too? Guess seven wasn't the password. <laughs> it says you can rotate this, but I'm not finding that to be the case. Doop, doop, doop. Okay. Can't even look up. Can we close the door? Nope. Okay. Well, I guess the last fiend we get... Oh, hang on a second. The clock says it's 9.30. So, what if the combination to the safe is 9.30? Oh, that's not what I meant. Did I just close out of the game? No, I didn't. Okay, what if... Yeah, what if the password is 9.30? Okay, well, it was worth a try. <laughs> that was my best idea. <laughs> my goodness, this is a tough game. Okay, we found... I think we found all the flippable switches on the island, though. Because I think we've explored pretty much the entire... Oh, oh, ho, 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 hold on a second. Oh, wait, that was just the note from Catherine. Never mind. Or the note to Catherine. It's apparently the guy who wrote the book's wife. From what I'd guess. Seven. Come on, man! Do something fun! Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm out of ideas outside of reading the books, but I think uh, I think people have had enough of reading the books. Um, that's an interesting game. Is there a way to aha save game? Yeah, I think I should. Um, this is save one, you doofus. Obviously, that was a very unique game. I'll definitely remember that one. Like, wow. Is the entire game just on this island, or is this just level one? That's kind of what I'm wondering, because it looked like at the beginning where it turned the page and it showed a picture of the island and then we went in. It, it To me, I thought this was going to be level one, but if this whole island is like, hey, this is the title screen, maybe that's the whole game. If so, like, wow, that's going to be a tough one. That's a tough game. <laughs> Someone's first... Yeah! I could, would you like an actual answer to that? Sure, I'm not planning on making this a full Let's Play or anything, so... It, I guess, yeah, you could tell me, is this the... Like, is, does the whole game take place on this island, or is this just, like, level one? Or maybe... Like, when when there was the book at the beginning, and it turned the page, and it showed a picture of this island, and it went in, is it going to be like, we complete a puzzle here, then it goes back to the book, turns the page, shows a different thing, and we go there? Maybe that's a better way of putting it. <laughs> that is a really cool game, though. Like, again, I, I think this this game takes... Actually, wait, I have the original game, I think. Maybe not the original, but... 1994. Yeah, I can understand how this was kind of mind-blowing at the time that this game was released. Definitely a really cool experience. I'm glad I played it. It's not exactly like that. The island is one age or world, and there are other ages. Okay. So there's some time... I figure there's going to be time travel involved. That's kind of cool. Yeah, very, very unique game. Have not really played anything like it, but... That was a really cool... That was a really cool game to try out. I'm glad I did it. Thanks for the suggestion, Proxima. That was a lot of fun.